Hello everyone and welcome to the third video in this section and in this video we're going to be looking at Cubes OS and why it is probably the best option in terms of operating systems when browsing the deep web like literally this is hands down the best thing or the best operating system that you can use when browsing the deep web. So I'm just going to go to the website right now. I already have it opened. The website is uh, www.cubes uh, slash I mean ha, sorry hyphen os.org you can basically get it by just google searching cubes os with a q and it's going to be the first uh, the first website up here so you just want to open it and it's a very very nice website as you can clearly see and uh, what's this right here it says cubes os a reasonably secure operating system very very convincing but you might be asking yourself what is cubes os and basically Cubes OS is a security oriented operating system. All right. Now you might be asking, why is this the best option for Tor? Well, I'm just going to give you uh, basically my point on why it's the best and maybe Edward Snowden's advice right here. So if you're serious about security, Cubes OS is the best OS available today. It's what I use and it's free. Now, for those of you who don't know who Edward Snowden is, Edward Snowden is a whistleblower that is currently being that's currently wanted by the United States for um, basically leaking information about the CIA. And he's currently being he's currently wanted. Right. And he communicates using this operating system right here. And that in that really is enough to tell you that this operating system is really secure. So uh, let's get started on how to basically download and install this. So uh, you just want to hit this very, very nice button right here, download and install, and uh, voila, uh, it's going to take you to this page right here, and you want to make sure you download the, the latest version. Um, this, uh, as of recording this video, uh, the latest version is Cubes 3.2. I will be updating these videos as uh, newer versions uh, get released. So basically you want to download, uh, you have two options, you have your ISO uh, version and you have the torrent version of the download, which essentially are both the same. The torrent uh, button right here is just for basically downloading the ISO through torrents. Uh, I'm just going to click on ISO and that's what I recommend you guys would do. It's quite a large file and by the way, this operating system when installed is quite large as well. So I'm just going to hit uh, download and I already have it downloaded uh, and we're just going to get started like so. So uh, you guys might be asking, how do I get it installed? Well, that's what you have two ways of going about it. You can either install it on your USB flash drive and then uh, boot it from your computer and then install it on maybe a, maybe install it on another hard drive that you have around or you could dual boot it with Windows. Or uh, you could basically run it uh, on a virtual machine. But basically, that's really, really very simple. If you're focused on installing it on a USB flash drive, this is how you would go about it. So basically, I'm just going to go to the installation guide. And you want to go uh, into the, uh, inst basically go down here into the copying the ISO onto the installation medium section right here. Uh, and it's going to tell you that you have to use um, the Rufus tool. That's basically, I think, how you pronounce it. Rufus is basically a program that will allow you to create a bootable USB uh, drive uh, the easy way, as it claims on the website. So just download that right here. Uh, I'm just going to download uh, this one right here. It's a very, very small file, 932 kilobytes. Just going to download it. And it should be done right now. And I'm going to run it. Hopefully, it opens up right now. Uh, so there we are. Just... Uh, just accept the permission to run it and uh, do I want to check for uh, updates? No, I really don't need that right now. Uh, so just let it run and it should open up right now. All right. So um, basically what you're going to need is a flash drive, preferably uh, I think 16 gigabytes and above. All right. Now, if you don't have a flash drive uh, of that uh, size, I'm going to show you an alternative way of running Cubes OS. And that's through virtualization, which is, I think, one of the best ways of going about it. But nothing can beat the good old uh, USB uh, installation uh, way. So basically, you select your USB drive right here. 
just make sure you select it. I have a 7.8 gigabyte drive in right now. I don't have a 16 gigabyte uh, flash drive plugged in. I do have one, but I don't have it plugged in. You then want to uh, go to this partition scheme and target system type. Just leave that as it is. File system NTFS, uh, just select the FAT32 default. You want to just select the default uh, cluster size and you want to give it a volume. I'm just going to call it cubes. Uh, this is what you would basically uh, do. You then want to go down here and select ISO image. And then you want to browse um, onto where you downloaded your Cubes OS ISO file, which is right here. Mine is on the desktop. You just have to go to wherever you saved yours. And I'm going to select mine. And it's going to open. And uh, basically just make sure quick format is enabled and create bootable disk is enabled. All right. Yeah, you can untick this if you don't want an extended label or icon files and basically just start the installation process. Once this is done, just uh, power off your computer and then boot. Uh, you want to boot up into your BIOS mode and select uh, boot from USB flash drive. I'm sure plenty of you guys know how to do that and just select the flash drive and it should boot up Cubes OS and it should take you through the installation uh, section, which I will get to in a few moments. So. What I'm going to do is I am going to basically virtualize this. Now, I can go about this by basically downloading a virtualization software. I'm going to be using VMware for this demonstration. So just Google VMware and you, you want to click on the first link. By the way, this is a free software to, to download and to use. And uh, just let the website load and you want to go into, um, excuse me, I don't know what's up with the website. All right, so you want to go into the download section and you want to go into workstation player. All right. So you want to just go into the do uh, workstation player and download um, this one right here. Just download it. I already have it downloaded and installed. It's very, very simple installation uh, to go through. And once you have it installed, just open it up right here. So we have VMware workstation 12 player. That's the latest version as of recording this video. All righty. Now, once it opens, we want to basically go into this section right here, create a new virtual machine. All right. So now we want to make sure we select install a disk image file. This has to be an ISO file as it uh, says here. And we're going to say uh, just browse where you saved the ISO file or where you downloaded it. Again, mine is on the desktop. I'm going to click on it and open it. And it's going to give you a warning. Could not detect which operating system uh, is in the disk image. No problem or there. We're just going to hit next and we're basically going to select a guest operating system as Linux because Cubes OS is based off Linux and you want to make sure you select Fedora 64 bit because that is what Cubes OS is based off. It's based off Fedora. If your computer is 32 bit, just select Fedora. If it's 64 bit, select Fedora 64 bit and hit next. Uh, you want to give it a name. I'm going to call mine Cubes OS. And you want to give it, you just want to browse uh, into a directory where you want to save the files that will be associated with this virtual machine. I'm going to be saving mine in my virtual OS folder. You can save yours wherever. It recommends the documents and you can do that. That's fine. Just hit OK and hit Next. Now it's going to ask you for the how uh, the specify the disk capacity. I will recommend 30 gigabytes and this may come as a shock to you, but it's true. This operating system is huge and the, because it has a lot of features really. So I'm just going to select a maximum disk size of 30 gigabytes. Uh, don't worry if it says recommended size for Fedora. We're go I'm going to store it in a, in a single file. I don't want it to be split into multiple files. Just hit next. You now want to customize your hardware. I'm going to customize my hardware right now. And I'm going to basically give it a memory, which is RAM. I'm going to give it a RAM of 2048 megabytes, which is two gigabytes right here. And uh, you can basically just move the slider yourself really. You then have your processor section. Now this depends on what hardware you have. If you have a processor that has only two cores, you can basically give one core. My processor has four cores, so I'm going to give two cores. And uh, you don't need to touch anything, uh, anything else right here. You now want to go down into your display section and make sure that accelerate 3D graphics is checked. 
and you want to basically select your graphics memory depending on your graphics card i would recommend uh, globally 128 megabytes if it gives you an error just select 64 megabytes depending on what graphics card your computer has it, um, my my graphics card has two gigabytes dedicated that's why it's giving me 768 recommended but i'm just going to stick with uh, 128 megabytes because uh, anything over that is overkill really so i'm just going to hit close and uh, we can basically say finish all right so it's going to give us this very very nice uh, section here called cubes os which is what we created and uh whoops uh looks like it did not actually uh, create a ram of two gigabytes so i'm just going to move it to the two gigabyte section there and i'm going to hit ok and i'm going to start the virtual machine and it should uh, just start immediately so there we are vmware and it's going to open cubes os so if you see this screen everything uh, that we've done so far has worked flawlessly so uh just let's go up uh, the text the selection will be highlighted by white text i don't want to test the media i'm just going to say install cubes the first option and i'm going to hit enter and it's going to basically start the installation process uh, i mean the the startup process really and uh let this run this probably take a few few sec a few seconds or up to a minute to start up um Alrighty, so once it started up, it should give you this welcome screen right here, uh, the installation welcome screen, and it's going to be telling you welcome to Cubes R3.2 as of this recording. Again, this is the latest version right now, and it's going to ask you what language you would like to run through during the installation process. I would like to use English and English United States. That's what I would really, really enjoy and I would find comfortable. Feel free to use any other language right here. I'm going to hit continue. And it uh, probably should take a few seconds and we can proceed then. All right. So it's going to give you this very, very nice uh, looking mini menu, which is actually quite professional. I must say it, is rem it has reminiscence of Red Hat Linux and uh, very, very top, top drawer Linux distros. And basically, it's very, very simple to get started with the installation. You want to select the it's divided into sections. You have localization, software and system. So let's start off with localization. We've basically configured everything right now. So you want to select what keyboard, um, what keyboard uh, layout you want to use. I'm going to be using English US. You can add another one right here. That's basically good enough for me. Uh, what language support you would like to use? Again, we've already selected that, but if you want to feel like you want to add some more, you can add them right here. For example, English India, English Australia. For now, I'm just going to keep mine to English United States. Again, you can do whatever you want, really. You then want to go into time and date and configure it according to what time zone you are in. You can also configure the date. You can also configure the AM PM system to show it there, to show the AM PM system. And you can also enable the 24 hour clock, which I like. So I'm going to leave it at that. You can then now move on to uh, the software section and the installation source. We already have configured this, so we really don't need to touch on that. You then want to go into the software selection. Now, in the software selection, um, we're going to basically, it's going to basically, it's going to be using the XFCE desktop environment. Now, for those of you who are uh, already familiar with the Linux desktop environments, the XFCE, as you know, is a very, very good desktop environment, and you will be able to change that once it's installed. But for those of you who are not familiar with this, don't worry about any of this. Just don't touch anything right here. Just leave all of this and uh, just hit done. And the last section is the installation destination. Basically, just selecting the disk that you want to use. Now, uh, we created the 30 gigabyte virtual, uh, virtual disk or the VMware virtual disk. Just select it and um, you're going to add the disk and just hit done and just select this disk. And you want to scroll down here into encryption. Now, if you're going to be using VMware or a virtual machine, disable encrypt my data because this will cause a lot of problems and you won't be able to boot into the operating system once installed. So again, I'm saying just 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 uncheck this. However, if you're installing this through USB on uh, you're installing this on a physical drive or you're dual booting it with Windows, the installation process is very, very is the same thing 
I, 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 you can basically then encrypt my data. You don't need to uncheck this. But if you're running through the installation as I am now, you just want to make sure you, you just uh, disable encrypt my data. Once done, just hit done and uh, you should be good to go. Now again, if you're doing this uh, the uh, hardware way, which is basically installing it on another hard drive, um, you can basically just select the disk right here and just hit automatically configure partitioning. Or if you're experienced enough to do it, you could go into I will configure the partitioning, which I would not recommend for beginners. But if you're doing this the virtual way, uh, which is what I'm doing now, just hit done and you should be go you should be good to proceed just hit begin installation and uh, it should uh, basically start the installation this the installation will take quite a while so i'll get back to you guys when it's done all right so once the installation is complete it'll take a while by the way it took about 30 minutes for me and i'm sure it's taken about the same time for you uh, it's basically going to say reboot now uh, be, if you have not basically set um, your your user creation right here, this will not be grayed out. So just go ahead and click it and enter your username and your password. And once that's done, you can basically just hit reboot right here. And that will basically uh, reboot it and you'll be able to use Cubes OS. Now in the next video, I'm going to be showing you basically how you can uh, configure Tor on Cubes OS and how to basically get access to the deep web straight out of the box and i'm also going to be explaining how to use cubes os a little bit because it is quite a different type of operating system and it works in a very different way even for linux users this will be it it has a learning curve that i will help you to get uh, familiarized with but uh, that's it for this video um thank you so much for watching this video if you have any questions just let me know in the q a section of the course thank you so much for watching